Recently, we just set the clocks back an hour. But, here in the National Ninja League, it's always ninja time. Welcome, one and all, to Ninja Lab. I'm your host, William, and we are still early on in Season 6 of the National Ninja League, but the competition has been hot as ever. This time, we'll be taking a look at four different qualifiers for the Elite Division, and we're going to start things off with the Warrior Factory Syracuse. For the Elite Female Division, in second place was Ashley Gianni. Ashley was looking very strong on the first half of the course, getting through the balance obstacles as well as some of the upper body ones as well. However, after completing the I-beam, she was unable to get past the rolling trapeze as she made the transfer and was unable to maintain her grip and rolled right off. But the good news for her is that she now qualifies for the New England Regional Final. And in first place for the ladies was Addie Herman. Addie was very similar to Ashley in that she looked very strong in the first half of the course, taking down all the obstacles with very little issues. And she ended up failing in the exact same spot on that rolling trapeze. However, time was the ultimate factor as she was able to complete the I-beam approximately 13 seconds faster than Ashley did earning her first place and 10 more points on the New England leaderboard. As a result of Addie already qualifying, Rachel Franz qualifies for the New England Regional Final. For the Elite Male Division, in second place was Josiah Pippel. The rising star was able to qualify for the New England Regional by basically doing impressively well on almost the entirety of the course. He was able to survive the rolling trapeze bar, survive slide for your life, and make it through some very challenging parkour obstacles, as well as a cliffhanger and a flying bar. But unfortunately, when attempting the very last obstacle, a tower of a salmon ladder, he unfortunately slipped off with time ticking down, and he had to settle for a second place. But he does qualify, so that's a good thing. And in first place was Aiden Wood. The young Aiden was able to qualify for the New England Regional by putting up a very similar performance as Josiah did. He simply looked smooth and comfortable through the entirety of the course. However, unlike Josiah, he failed on the very last obstacle of the whole thing. But he was able to beat Josiah to that obstacle by approximately 35 seconds, allowing him first place and 10 points for the New England leaderboard. A strong performance from the young ninja. If you're interested in competing in the National Ninja League yourself, go to nationalninja.com to look up the full schedule of upcoming qualifying events to see if there is one being held near your location. Everyone is welcome. Just make sure you sign a waiver and you're free to join. Now, let's take a look at the results of Windsor Ninja Academy. For the Elite Female Division, in first place was Casey Rothschild. The rising star was able to survive a labyrinth of obstacles early on, both upper and lower body. But after making it more than halfway through the course, she was unable to make her way through the minefield and unfortunately got burned on halfway through the obstacle. But she now qualifies for the New England Regional Finals. Hey, 
For the elite male division, in second place was Christian Diubris. In a stacked male division where almost all the male competitors either finished the course or failed the final obstacle, Christian knew that time was of the essence and he made every second count. He got hung up on the very last obstacle and had to do a lot in order to recover and thankfully he was able to recover and finish just in the nick of time as he beat the third place finisher Zachary Sequeria by about four seconds. So if he was just a little bit slower, he wouldn't be in second place and he wouldn't have qualified for the New England Regional Final. And in first place was True Becker. Simply put, True was perfect on the course. Simply perfect. He had no problem on the final obstacle and he smoothly finished the entire course. To give you an idea of how well True did, Christian, who finished second place, completed the course in a minute 42.9 seconds, while True finished with 61 and a half seconds. Yes he was that much faster. True's impressive performance earned him a qualification spot for the New England Regional Final. It's now time for the comment question of the week. Simply put, I want to know, how do you train for Ninja during the colder seasons? We're getting closer to December, the temperature is dropping, it's getting darker sooner. So how do you deal with these conditions? Do you still train outside or are you strictly an indoor training person? Or maybe you do it outside at night. Who knows? Leave your answers in the comment section down below. Now let's take a look at the results for Obstacle Ninja Academy. For the elite female division, in second place was Jamie Ross. Jamie is a real fighter as early on she got hung up on a couple of the hanging obstacles as she was trying to transfer to the next handles of those obstacles. However, she was able to maintain her grip the entire time and not tire out. So she was able to earn herself second place, but unfortunately for her and many of the other ninjas, the sixth obstacle on this course was a real ninja killer, taking out a majority of the competitors regardless if they were male or female. And Jamie was no exception as she was unable to maintain her grip halfway through the obstacle and immediately fell in one of the transfers. But she qualifies for the Southeast Regional Final. So congratulations. And in first place was Ashley McConville. Ashley also failed in the sixth obstacle in the exact same spot, but the key difference was that she reached it in more than a minute faster than Jamie did. Unlike Jamie, Ashley had no problem with the early obstacles and was able to pass her way through, but unfortunately, ONA had a deadly ninja killer on the course. She qualifies for the Southeast Regional. Easy. For the elite male division, in second place was Matthew Hall. Despite a brutal obstacle course, we still had four finishers and Matthew was the second fastest. And he made it through the course while wasting little time in between obstacles and even made some big moves along the way. Good thing too, because if he was just four seconds slower, he would not be qualifying for the Southeast Regional Final, at least on this qualifier. 
Matthew was able to survive the course's bungee cords and trap doors and finish with a time of 1 minute and 41.92 seconds. Peace. And in first place was Brady Parks. Brady was smooth as butter on the course, making his way through all the obstacles with seemingly no effort and even made some big moves of his own on the course. Brady was able to qualify for the Southeast Regional Final by finishing the whole course with a time of 1 minute and 35.77 seconds. An impressive run for the young ninja. <laughs> Oh, man. I think that's it. In case you haven't seen, it was recently announced on social media that the season will be extended. That's right, Season 6 of the National Ninja League will now take longer to complete due to the current events of the world. We have decided to extend the current season and Worlds will be taking place later than they usually do. More information will be coming soon. Now, let's wrap up this week's episode with taking a look at the results of Level Up. For the elite female division, in second place was Julia Bainbridge. Julia was looking incredibly strong early on, getting through the obstacles like the body prop and the monster swing. In fact, she was poised to take first place for the females, but unfortunately, the salmon letter denied her a victory as she fell at the very top of the obstacle. If she had completed it, she would have taken first, but she'll have to settle for second place. And in first place was Jessica Helmer. Jessica took a more slow and methodical pace in this tortoise and hare competition. However, she was able to complete the salmon ladder and reach the top. Unfortunately, when taking on Level Up's unique variation of the flying bar, she slid off and was down on that part of the course. But the good news for both her and Julia is that they both qualify for the Southeast Regional Final. And Julia uh, picks up 9 points and Jessica picks up 10 points. <laughs> For the elite male division, in second place was RJ Roman. RJ was one of three finishers on this qualifier, but it almost didn't happen as he had an extremely close call on the body prop where he almost did a header on the course. But he was able to recover and still make it through the rest of Level Up's impressive and tricky obstacles, including such obstacles as the monkey pegs, the stronghold zipper, and the swinging maiden. However, RJ was only the second fastest time of the finishers and earned himself 9 points and a qualification in this season's Southeast Regional Final. A good performance for the rock star. And in first place was longtime ninja competitor Brett Sims. Brett took a tricky risk on the body prop when he took one slack line by itself, but it paid off. And turns out it was very needed. He was able to do the rest of the course on cruise control and get to the end of the course in clear. However, the real story is the time of completion. Third place Matthew Hall finished in 2 minutes 36.55 seconds. Second place, RJ Roman finished in 2 minutes and 25.65 seconds, and Brett Sims finished with a time of 2 minutes and 25 seconds flat. Yes, Brett beat RJ by less than one second. 
And that's why in Ninja, every second pays off, as it earned Brett 10 points, the victory, and a qualification for the Southeast Regional Final. Thank you for watching Ninja Lab. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to know when future videos go live. And hey, why don't you go watch uh, some full runs from this season? Or who knows, there might be a live stream of some of the qualifiers on this very YouTube channel. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time.